Hi, my name is Dr. Marina Kostina, and I guide consciously minded individuals on a journey to reclaim the fragmented pieces of their soul. I help them manifest joy and peace and freedom by breaking through their lethargic status quo and enjoying their lives. Most people have some persistent problem in their life uh, that usually deprives them from joy and fully living their lives. Now, external circumstances such as maybe problems in relationships, uh, work issues, national and international crisis, they only make these issues more severe. And if these people could have changed their lives on their own, they already would have, right? So it's not that something is wrong with them, that they are not smart enough or not um, don't have strong willpower. They can't get out of being stuck because these types of ongoing problems are most often driven by a part of the mind that's not easily accessed through the traditional means, the subconscious part of the mind. And that's the reason why standard counseling often only gets limited results, because it does not quickly access the subconscious mind. In all of my training, I realized that hypnosis is the fastest way to connect with the subconscious. But many have lots of misconceptions about hypnosis. So I want to quickly explain to you what hypnosis is and why hypnotherapy sessions can be beneficial for you. And by the way, hypnosis has been already acknowledged as a legitimate medical procedure by the American Psychological Association and by the American Medical Association. I want you to understand that hypnotherapy session is much different than the stage hypnosis. You're not going to lose your consciousness or be a zombie. You will not be doing anything silly or against your will. And you're definitely not going to wake up with your pants on the chandelier. Everybody's pointing at you and laughing. I don't do that anymore. I'm just joking, okay? These are ridiculous myths that people created about hypnosis. You're not going to reveal your secrets. Uh, you're not going to be stuck in hypnosis. This is some misconception of hypnosis that I don't know where people got it from. So today, I actually want to talk about the science of hypnosis. We have three minds, conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. Unconscious mind is all of your bodily functions, right? Uh, and the way your organs are working. You still are breathing when you're sleeping, right? So these are all physiological factors we're not even going to discuss today. Now, conscious mind, which is about 5 to 10% of your mind, right, has four functions. It has to analyze information and find the reason for everything. You know it, right? It has the willpower, which does not guess, get us any fast results because all of us have been on diets, right, a thousand times. And it also has short-term memory, like our phone numbers and others. But our long-term memory and perfect memory lies in your subconscious mind. Did you know that we never forget what we learn in life? Yep, we remember all sense of, of touch, smell, feeling, and the emotions attached to different events and people in your life. And it's all in your subconscious mind, all the time. Even before you came into this world, the only problem is that you cannot recall it. Just because you cannot recall it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Now, subconscious mind has all of your programming. And programming is a result of your life experiences and your reactions to these experiences. You can change your life by using hypnosis to get into your subconscious mind and change these programs. We also have habits in the subconscious mind. We got good habits, bad habits, and utilitarian habits like brushing our teeth or driving, right? Um, now, Protective parts of the mind are also a part of our subconscious mind, right? It's our primary intention to keep us safe. It does anything to do it, to protect ourselves. Self-preservation is number one function, and it runs everything, but has no logic. And it doesn't make any decisions. So whatever gets in there is accepted as the truth. And that is why we have a critical factor of our conscious mind. It's just like a guardian that is a gate uh, and talks about, like, shall I accept this information or not? What is allowed in your logical thinking? Well, it, is dep it depends on your old programming and the reason. So if new idea comes, but it does not conform with your previous experience, it is not allowed. For example, so many clients want to have a great relationship, but they got used to the toxic ones. 
So when a healthy partner shows up at their doorstep, they don't feel attraction to them because they don't accept them because uh, it is not familiar for them, right? And they invite abusers and toxic people because of the familiarity with this experience. You don't even realize how you reject things.